Recording. Right. Uh, nice to finally meet you guys. Uh, how are you doing? Not too bad, thank you. Right. Uh, just uh, for the video, can you introduce yourselves? Well, um, I'm David from Celticore, guitar player. Uh, Stephen, uh, vocalist and whistle player. I'm Fionn and I also play guitar for Celticore. And excellent. Right. Um, you guys uh, focus a lot of your lyrics on Celtic mythology from Ireland and uh, uh, possibly, I think, some parts from Irish history as well, from uh, the pre-Christian times. Uh, which one would you say is your favourite myth? Um, it's the uh, Slossom, you know? Uh, awesome. you, can, you can... Depends, really. Uh, if you're looking for the more romantic view, you've got like, t things like Children of Lear. Um, if you're looking for the more tragic... The tragic sorrows, and, yeah. you know? There's, uh, there's plenty to choose from. Uh, stories, uh, the story of Oisin, do you know? Yeah. No, like the, there's the happy-go-lucky fairy tale Irish, and then there's the real gritty, gritty, gritty dirty, yeah. horrible, yeah. <laughs> you know, horrible histories. But um, well, I'm yeah. sure it's the case with any mythology. Yeah, I really like. I like. I like this. One of my favourite stories ever about uh, Irish history or Irish myth. Sorry, I should say, is um, the story of the children of Lear. Yeah. All right. It has been bastardised, but it is a. Uh, it's 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 an ancient story and it's very sad and it, it is one of the tragedies, the three tragedies of Irish mythology. Um, no, I definitely agree. I definitely agree with Dave there. You know, um, a particular story that I quite enjoy, Finn of the Fianna. There's a lot going on in it. A lot, a very big story, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's it's one of them epics, you know, that gets overlooked quite a bit. And uh, you know, I say if, if I was to recommend any stories for anyone in interest in Irish mythology, I would say Finn of the Fianna to start off with. Yeah. The great one to start off with. Yeah. So that'd be mine. Cool. Yeah, I don't really have a favorite story, but I'm kind of the one that the idea that seems to attract me most is uh, Tirnanog, basically the land of uh, the eternal youth, and just this idea that, um, like, the side and crossing over into this other world, and uh, you know, it's just a place where you're just eternally young, and once you go there, you pretty much you can't go back, and if you go back, you are going to you're essentially just going to die, so you just have to... I don't know, it's like... There's so much to take for already, you can't... I personally can't do that. Sorry. Chance I can't. I personally See. can't pick one favourite story. Um, thanks, Glenn. <laughs> uh, you should have seen that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's so much to take from. I mean, personally, the idea of Tunanog, um Children of Lear, the Fina, I mean there's more so many ideas to take from that you can't really I can't choose one favourite. Like uh, from Irish there are only what, two or three different two stories from, from a mountain, from a mountain uh, like the, a mountain of mythology that is there and has yeah. always uh, always First been demo. there. First demo pretty much covered in like the uh, of you yeah. yeah, well like you know, like small section of the small story, section. Yeah. A very, very small section of mythology. There's so much we can um, draw from, and that was always that was always one thing with the band that we wanted to do was to flesh everything out. Oh, you know, um, car um, keeping it in. But basically, um, <laughs> basically that was our, our whole intention when we started the band was to uh, flesh out mythology. You know, um, a lot of bands um, were kind of singling out one character and making songs about it, which is great. Yeah, you know, it was kind of. Um, the just waiting for a meteor strike now. Um, uh, so that's definitely what we wanted to do, to basically flesh out the stories because there's a lot of stories. Yeah. And um, you know, you know, the, you can't sum up some of these songs. You can't sum up these stories in one song. You have to flesh it out because it's such a, a wide, encompassing um, aspect. You know what I mean? Uh, and it's and it's great. And that's, that's the whole thing when we wanted when we started the band <laughs> Health Corps, We wanted to make it full length. You know? What I mean? Yeah. Like in the halls, um, first demo that's the, yeah, the first, first demo, I well, would say first demo, yeah. um, we won't, we won't, we won't, we won't, we won't talk about uh, what happened previous, uh, but that's basically, it's, it's just one story, but like there's, there's seven songs going through that story, talking about what happened, and um, you know, it, it, as, as Steve said, you can't just sum it up on one. We, and it's not as if we drew out everything. There is so much in that story 
<laughs> that you just can't put it into one song. And like uh, now with our, our next release, uh, we are again it's again it's again a full story. Full like story. The whole album is just one story from the yeah. start to the end. It's not just. But again, session. it's yeah. a part of a, 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 a it's uh, it's all intertwining. Every part connects. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of your new material and your next release, um, what are going to be like the main underlying concepts and stories for it? The main underlying concepts for the next album, um, basically we are covering uh, the land, landing of the gale in its, in its fullness, um, there will be seven tracks, one instrumental, and this is going to be the start of a uh, you know, much bigger picture, like our, all, our, all our releases are, are going to be concept driven, so it's going to flat, they're going to be, you know, they're going to take the listener basically through the stories, but in, a, in, in the, the art of music, basically. Creating yeah. that atmosphere, creating that dark atmosphere, and you know, giving giving the stories a bit more life or <coughs> our interpretation of the stories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And going back to um, the Celtic mythology, uh, with uh, a lot of the sources on Celtic mythology being written uh, by Christian priests and scholars, uh, do you find it challenging fleshing out the actual mythology from the um, external Christian influences? Yeah. Um what happened was, um, see, all our stories are passed down through storytelling, the art of storytelling, and even today, to today now, there's there are still storytellers in Ireland, but it, it's an ancient craft and it's it's really it's dying. Dead. It's almost dead. But I think uh, it, it is a good a good thing that the monks that did actually record they in the annuals, preserved it, preserved it, basically. recorded the history, right? Now, now of course, it's, got, it's always going to be changed to suit the reader or to suit somebody, but the essentials are there. Yeah. Uh, like a lot of Christian, uh, a lot, sorry, a lot of Celtic history is, you know, you hear the, the more obvious folk tales, but then when you delve into the annuals and you see the translations, it's a lot different. There's definitely a link between, um, as, as I was saying, the annals, the first annals, and the high kings, and, and the actual mythology itself. It do, to, does tie in hand in hand with particular invasions, you know? Um, and in, in some respects, you know, the Christian monks that did uh, put it to paper, um, they did preserve a lot of it. Now, okay, some stories have, did change because of their influence, but they respected even Christians, they respected, even though they were taking over, you know? Yeah. Uh, they respected uh, the stories that were there. And that when they went to walk, that was, that was the case, even though that was the, the, the preordaining religion and is to, to stay in Ireland. Yeah. Like, even with um, uh, the story of the children of Lear, as I said earlier on, it, there's, there's different versions of it. Uh, but the most pop, uh, popular one, you could say, is the one of, uh, with St. Patrick in it. St. Patrick comes along and uh, turns the, the three children, the three swans back into human beings and therefore Christianity is brought into it. But like, it's not a case that we're anti-Christian or anything. We don't go in for that. You know, we're not, we don't go in for religion, we don't go in for politics. No politics. It's just, it's just, just music. music and stories. And, 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 and giving something, giving a different interpretation of what's already there with our own interpretation, a darker interpretation. Um, and that's something that we can kind of breathe life into. Uh, live and on CD. That's the, that's, the, that's the initial plan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and how would you guys describe your music in five words? Then um, that's that's a hard question. That is a hard so question. Doomy, um, doomy atmosphere. Uh, um, like the kind of term that's been the term that's been kind of flying around here and there. Um, black and folk, metal. There's bits of doom. There's bits of there's there's bits, bits of, of death. Trash. Trash. Like the thing is, it, it's a it, we're not. A, we wouldn't be like a t atypical folk metal band in regards taking a folk tune, folk tune that's been a trad tune that's been there for ages, and just putting making it metal. We don't do that. Yeah. We we are basically making our own folk tunes. If that makes any sense, yeah. making our own folk uh, tales and stories with the influence of black and the influence of doom, the influence of thrash and, and a bit of death, and, and you know giving it our own. Like our, all of us are are in this 100 percent, and uh, you can hear it in the music. Now, yeah. The gigs. And That's speaking it, yeah. of your um, influences, um, what would you say are the biggest musical influences on the band's music? It, it, it differs from each person. Right? It differs from each person. Um, uh, yeah, because well, everybody really is an individual in the band. Yeah. Um, there isn't one single 
songwriter in the band. Like, if I come in with an idea, I give it to these guys, and they tear it apart, and they find what's good and what, what works for them and what works for, you know. But, like, it's nice it's bands have had that which have influenced. Yes. Oh, uh, like, a lot. <laughs> you there's really. tons. You, you, you couldn't count them all. Like, obviously, certainly Skyport. Yeah, Skyport. Okay. Yeah, major. Grand Bar. The other scene was Mel Morgan. Mel yeah, Morgan, Morgan, yeah. Crew Con, Waylander, you know, like. Mordial. You have to give for Mordial. Yeah, big time. Um, no, like, but like, we've, we've taken these influences, and when we when we started to see, it, and now that we have, we have new members as well, it's, it's really fleshed out the band. The band, now, in the two years it's been going, um, has really become itself, even through live gigs and stuff, you know, it's come, it's come into its own, really. Yeah. And I think now the next, the material is coming on its way. It's gonna be a real, a good interpretation of what we were capable of. Yeah. And, um, it's yeah well, even you know, even from the time like obviously we've recorded the first album, and even since we've recorded, we find ourselves we're still growing and still. And like I personally would listen back and I'm like, oh, I could have done this there, and I could have done this like, whatever. Yeah. But we're, it's just a constant. Nice. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. Essentially, I mean, essentially we're just constantly evolving. We haven't been still, and every time we write something, it, it's it's just a constant evolution, like. We're constantly, I would say we're constantly getting better. I mean, certainly I, you can hear the difference. Well, obviously you can't yet, but when the album is released, you're going to be able to hear a dramatic difference in just overall, just everything is, all the musicianship has become better from everyone. And it's just, we just want to build on it and, you know, take as much influences as we can. Like I would listen to so much, even outside of metal, I would just listen to jazz, whatever, blues, anything. Um, and, um, essentially, don't stop evolving and growing and taking on new influences. That's it. Yeah. Well, uh, going back to the topic of songwriting, uh, what's the, you know, how does a typical songwriting session for Keltacore go? Me. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, like, it was in the past. It was in the past. Uh, no, to be honest, um, I think this is this is one way of explaining it. Steve comes up with a concept. We all read the concept, and we all go off and try interpret that. In try and interpret it. And bring it all back in and mash it together yeah. and see what works. You know, like there's there's lots of ideas we've had. I mean, just don't work. Yeah, and true. then there's some that really do. A lot of the time, what we'll do is we might like. Well, I know personally how I do it is I like to write things in like full kind of blocks. So I would write like I would write something that could be an idea for like a full song, and I send it off to these guys. Well, probably like an MP3, or else I just showcase it to them, and they'd be like, okay, yeah, this bit works. This bit we can change this or do something like that bit is just shit, just get rid of that bit. But um, at the end of the day, it's just pretty much showcasing ideas which are uh, taking them and evolving, you know, reusing what's usable. I never said your ideas are shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, essentially just we, we write we write stuff and showcase it to each other and whether it's just a riff or whether it's a full song, we just take what's best from everyone and try, you know, somehow and a response, you know what I mean? Like when, when the music, when it comes, when the music, when we're writing about a particular concept and it feels like that's exactly what it is, then we write and we write. We get to the point where it's, even with this new album, the, between the concept we've gotten, I think we've gotten the spot on exactly the way we would imagine it, the sound. Uh, I think that, that, that we, um, it'll be interesting to see what people think, you know? Yeah. Uh, last few questions, Alan. Um, aside from yourselves, uh, are there any bands from the Irish metal scene that you'd recommend to our readers? More yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, all of them. Where do we start? There's, um, there's so many bands, even outside the folk. There's yeah, so outside many the folk, there's, there's a lot of really Morning great Beloved bands. would be a big one for more me, even an Irish doom. Well, more more bands that wouldn't really know about uh, bands like uh, Brigantia. Brigantia, Brigantia, Brigantia yeah. Yeah. fantastic. Core moment. If you're into your old sort of, uh, say like Black Sabbath, you know, band called Brigantia. Uh, my God, they're really even to there's, start. There's, there's a lot of bands. Um, a, great, a great place to start would be MetalIreland.com. Yeah. And go there and you'll be able to find out a lot, a lot, of, great, a lot of great bands who are plugging away, you know. Yeah. A lot of bands, you can actually, uh, I won't say give away, but they offer free downloads on the music, so... Yeah, yeah. Dark Matter, there's... Dark, Dark Matter, Matter, Matter it's kind of ambient, ambient, ambient instrumental metal, you couldn't really say black or whatever. It's, but yeah, again, there's some really, really amazing bands. 
beginning to pop out of the Hellcracks. Return of Hellcracks. Irish black metal is very good. Very Legion of Wolves. Legion of Wolves as well, yeah. Like the, the there's song, actually, we'd be here all day actually making this <laughs> list, like, you know. Uh, yeah. But no, there is a real, there's a wealth of, uh, there's a wealth of bands. There really is. Yeah, so. <laughs> but definitely check, check my line on the comments. Yeah. Um, if you could take the soundtrack from any film and replace it with your own music, which one would it be and why? Uh, what do you think? Let me think. Um, <laughs> well, Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> <It's like laughs> for the new music um, that's coming up, you could say that the first scene is Saving Private Ryan. Right? <laughs> you could put our hopes in uh, uh, a new album to it. But, um, <laughs> at the moment, Valhalla Rising. Yeah, yeah Valhalla Val Rising. Rising. Is a fantastic. Film. Fantastic. Uh, probably 13th Warrior. The odd 13th Warrior. Cards of Brave, I would say all of it. Cards of Brave, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, bit, the bit where he gets his, the, the top gets his head schooled in, but nice. Yeah, yeah that's good. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, like that's actually yeah. There's um, there's a few all the violent parts. All the violent parts. Yeah, that, that's yeah. pretty much something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah but that's yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have anything you, uh, that you'd like to say to our readers before we finish up? Um, thanks for the time for the interview and. Uh, Check us out um, because we're going to be over in England again soon enough. Excellent. And, uh, we've got a lot of plans, a lot of plans to get into Europe next year. So, with any luck, and um, for anyone anyone who's interested, just check us out. Our new album will be out November 25th. And, uh, and cheers for all your support. Excellent. Thank you, guys.